girls always casually kind of talk to each other about their crushes, but I was always so afraid to just mention mine. I decided to treat myself like I was nothing. Then I felt like everyone would just leave me. One day I was driving with my dad to the beach and he goes, Edson, look at those girls in those bikinis. And I was just thought to myself, look at the guy next to them. And immediately after that, I always thought to myself, am I allowed to think that? You really look in the mirror and um, that's not you. I didn't think that for once nobody was gonna not like me. I felt that I wasn't gonna like myself. It's already challenging enough being a teen because you're just trying to figure out who you are in the world. So for a teen trying to figure out who am I, who do I want to be in relation to other people, how do I like other people, am I romantically attracted to certain people, am I sexually attracted to certain people, whoa, that's a lot to deal with. Well, I first started to question my sexuality when I was 12 or 13 in seventh grade. My name's Amelia, and I've been out as a lesbian for about two years now. Most of my friends had already come out as various different things, and I just started to wonder kind of about myself. At first, I came out as bisexual, because I felt that it would be easier. I later came out as a lesbian. I always knew that something was different. I never knew what it was. I'm Edson Montenegro. I identify as gay as of middle school in 2009. I mean, I knew I could talk to my parents about absolutely anything, and at that point it was like school, people that are frustrating me, but that depth of personal issues, I still wasn't necessarily 100% ready to really say, you know what, I am gay. I, di I didn't really think that I was ever a lesbian, but I knew that I was attracted to women, so I guess where, that's where bisexual comes in for me. My name is Ana Ayana Escalante, and I identify as a bisexual woman. Up until uh, the 11th grade, I was very embarrassed by the idea of being gay. As time went on, I knew that it wasn't going to go away. I saw women the same way I saw men. It can be really challenging to talk about the LGBTQ community because as of today, there are so many different gender identities and sexual orientations. It can be really confusing for people. One of the most common questions we'll get asked is, what is the difference between gender and sexuality? The L, G, and B are sexual orientations. It's about who you're attracted to. Who you might be romantically attracted to or sexually attracted to. Gender is more about who you identify as. You can identify as male, you can identify as female, gender neutral, gender queer, or gender fluid. It's empowering because there's all these different identities. But then it's also overwhelming because there's all these different identities. Where do I fit in all of this? My super specialty has become working with gender non-conforming kids and transgender adolescents and young adults. The gender journey actually starts at birth, and sometimes even before birth. Is it a boy or a girl? That's one of the most prominent questions that's asked when somebody is pregnant. Looking at that baby's anatomy, we start making stories about what that child should do as they grow up. I was confused about who I was. I, I always had like, you know, kind of like a little voice in your head saying, no, if you be this way, you're never gonna make it anywhere in life. Your family will hate you. I'm 13, I identify as a transgender girl or just Zoe. So one day I'm talking to my brother and my brother's like, you're not a girl. And then he's like, you have that. And I was like, I know I have that, but doesn't everyone have that? I knew that I felt different. I am Liam, I identify as a heterosexual male. And I was walking around dressing like a little boy up until 14, 15, once puberty started, and I knew that I didn't feel like I was a girl. I didn't have the knowledge or the language to be able to verbalize it to anyone around me. What's fascinating about younger gender nonconforming kids is they don't have a coming out process. They just like what they like, and they tell us. My dad, he used to throw away my mom's high heels because I used to walk around in the house with them. They start to understand at six or seven when they get into first grade, 
hey, you're a boy, you shouldn't like dolls, that's not okay, I'm not gonna be your friend if you like pink and that's your favorite color. And so they start to internalize those messages. I was extremely self-destructive. I was self-loathing. I wasn't physical with myself. I wasn't hard on anyone else. I just, I didn't like myself. They're sitting on what feels like a huge secret for a really long time, and that can be really damaging. So I tried hiding who I was from myself, because at the time I didn't know what transgender was or the name of it, and I was telling her, Mom, I'm a girl. I know I'm a girl. I was born this way, and I was telling her, I need to be who I am. There's a tremendous process of being ostracized if you're different. People were posting about me, calling me fag, why haven't you come out yet? One of my friends was really homophobic. She told me I was gonna burn in hell once. That can feel like a tremendous target on their back, especially in middle school. You know, I was called so many things like nerd, like he, she, like they all thought I was gay. I've definitely heard other people, like friends, make homophobic comments and I'm always that one person that stops them and corrects them. I'm Isabel and I identify as a straight female and I have two moms and I am an ally to everybody on the LGBTQ spectrum. I feel like I have a responsibility to go out into the world every day and be as kind and sensitive toward the subject of LGBTQ as I possibly can. You never know how much it can mean to have you step up and say, that's not appropriate. What do you even mean by that? Other teens that might be hearing you, that might be in the closet, that might identify as gay, can just be looking at you very differently thinking, wow, there's an ally, there's someone out there. Within just even this past month, raise your hand if you've heard someone say the phrase, that's so gay. Like just LGBTQ like, outreach is really important for Team Line because people can be really misinformed about the community. Do you think that teen is going to feel safe? Once they can understand what it means and how it hurts and affects other people, they'll usually stop. A high percentage of LGBTQ youth in the foster care system. This is just a topic we don't always talk about. And when we talk about it, we usually hear about suicides or all these other things that can be really negative and heavy. And we don't hear about how actually the community can be really awesome and really empowering. Hello, everybody. Welcome. One of the, the highlights of our work with Teen Line is coming in and training their new Teen Line teens. Kind of the most fun ways that we do that is through this vocabulary game. Heteronormativity. I think that it's really important for people to understand the language and knowing what is okay to say, what's not okay to say. Gender. And simply what things mean, because there's a lot of language out there and it's always changing. He is correct. I think that the way that we've asked people to describe their gender experience in the past is very limiting. So that is why I developed the Gender Abacus, so that people could have a more complete way to explain what their experience is. So you can see we start with sex. So you're assigned sex at birth based on your anatomy. The second rung of the abacus is gender identity, who you are. Do you, do you feel male, mostly male? Do you feel mostly female? Do you feel half of both? Do you feel a little more female than male? show us. But the abacus gives people an opportunity to visually represent what that experience is like for them. The third rung of the abacus is gender expression, how you want the world to see your gender, and then sexual attraction. But one kid said to me, and I thought this was great, um, can you just have a randomizer button there so that it goes, you know, and just goes, let the beads land wherever? Because that's sort of how I feel about my sexual attraction. I think it was probably my sophomore year. I was in a social psychology class. And that was the first time I had heard of gender identity disorder. And it all clicked. From that moment, I did come out to my sister almost immediately. What she said to me was, I have no idea what that is, but I love you. I'm always gonna support you and I'll help you figure out how to come out to dad. Coming out to my parents was a really gradual process. I would talked to my mom about the things I was having questions about or I was confused about, and she just kind of slowly picked up on everything. Well, my mom was totally cool with it. It was kind of like our little secret. And she said, nothing's changed. I still see you as my son. After that is when I told my dad. 
And he said, if anyone breaks your heart, then I'm gonna break them. And <laughs> that's the thing that really just made me feel good because I just realized that, you know, he cares. If you're coming out, it's really, really important to make sure you're safe. And if it's not a safe environment, it might not be the right time to come out. Sometimes, unfortunately, there's still those families out there that don't support. It's important to identify those people in our life that are safe. And that could be a teacher, that could be someone else's parent, that could be your friend. To have my mother and my father just be by my side. All I can say is that I was incredibly blessed. I can only hope that in the future that other people are as blessed as I am. Fifth grade year, you know, it all broke out. I finally became myself. The reaction I got from my mom was really good. I was so happy. My mom's like, all right, we're going shopping for your clothes. And then that was the day that I got my clothes. At the time, it felt like, wow, that's who I am. Like, finally, I'm complete now. I have a close friend at my school who this past year came out as lesbian and she just like came into the room and stood up and she was like, everybody, I'm coming out, I'm lesbian and we all just like started clapping and we were all so happy for her. What's important to remember is that everyone is going to have their own coming out process, everyone's going to have their own journey and all of those are okay. How about your family, are they supportive? If you've made this decision to come out, there's a lot of things out there to support you. There are a lot of books out there that you could read. There are so many opportunities to find support. So maybe you can't find someone in your school, let's say, who identifies as asexual, but there's a thriving community on the internet that you can turn to, and that can be really empowering. You can turn to social media, you can turn to Instagram, you can turn to Tumblr and Facebook, in youth groups and community centers, and there's always teen line. If a teen calls in from anywhere in the world, they're gonna get another teen who understands who is trained to just actively listen, provide empathy, and link them with resources based on anything they're going through. It seems like it helps. If you have a gay-straight alliance at your school, to reach out to the advisor, let them know what's going on with you. GSA stands for Gay Straight Alliance, but it's pretty much an LGBT. A GSA is a safe place for students to go and be heard and to feel validated. Fun fact about me is We try to introduce ourselves at each meeting and share our gender pronouns. Guys, I'm Nicole or Charlie. Uh, my GPs are she, her, or he, him. It's kind of fluid. You don't need to stress about getting it right. Uh, my name is Aaron. My PGP it's important that all students are involved. It is called a Gay Straight Alliance, so all students are welcome to attend meetings. I love going to the GSA. It's really great just being out at school and not worrying so much about other people judging me for who I am. It's really important for teens who think they may identify anywhere within the LGBTQ community to have safe spaces to bounce ideas. They need to be able to communicate that they're not sure if they identify as gay or bisexual, or they need to communicate with someone, anyone, safely. I'm not sure where I am, but you know this journey is unraveling before me. My dad, when I did come out to him, you know he had no idea about gender or identity. But once he saw how happy I was, he was on board with me. When I transitioned, I had a lot of acceptance from school kids. They give me hugs, they listen, they cry, and they're like, oh my god, you're so beautiful because you overcame this. I'm just like, I'm just being who I am, man. Like, it's, it's nothing big. When I entered my current high school in ninth grade, I really felt like I could be myself. And so it was just so liberating knowing that whoever gravitated towards me would gravitate towards me. And I don't know, it just felt like my wings were Spreading. <laughs> People on the spectrum can live successful lives and be happy and accepted where they are and for who they are. We say acceptance isn't enough, to tolerate someone isn't enough. We need to embrace different communities, including LGBTQ. Sometimes I get people say, oh, you're too pretty to be a lesbian. And it's like, I don't really think that's how it works.